suppressors. Or if you want to piss off the entire internet, call it a silencer. There's a lot of misconceptions around these things being if they are even legal to own, how much they actually suppress or silence the gun. Uh, and today I got a lot of answers for you on that. On the first one, if you don't live in one of the Lamo states in the United States, these are 100% legal to own. You got to jump through some paperwork hoops, but you know anyone can buy one if you have the money and the uh, the time to wait. As far as if these suppress or silence, what the, you know what the name is, the legally they're called a silencer, and you can't get around that. Uh, but they do really they don't silence, but they do suppress the guns. And there's a lot of controversy about how much uh, they are able to suppress any given firearm because a lot of folks will go on Silencer Co's website, look at the Hybrid 46, pair it up with the 45 ACP, and say that it's you know X Y Z level. So whatever you're seeing on camera or whatever cannot be true. But the thing is with that, they take that from the muzzle of the silencer at a certain distance, depending on, you can look the specs up for yourself. What it makes a difference is where you are hearing it from or where you're recording it from. A lot of the ones I do are from the shooter's perspective because I don't intend to be on this side of the suppressor when it is going off. So today what we're going to do is we're going to measure sound pressure levels of several different calibers. I got 22 long rifle, nine millimeter, 45 ACP, 300 blackout, 5.56, and we are going to test those at the shooter and then also 50 yards down range. Now, all of my internet sound engineer folks were saying, that my uh, either I didn't have one of these or that this one wasn't good enough. And you know, it, it is not probably good enough to measure the uh, gunshot sounds, but it will get us in the ballpark and it will give us some relative reference points in order to use this because instead of spending, you know, a thousand or two thousand, however much I need to spend on getting one of these that can register gunshots, I'd rather just purchase another one of these instead. So without further ado, let's get going. We'll start with 22 and then we'll work our way up, see what the sound levels are like at the shooter's perspective and downrange. And if you guys really are concerned about what the muzzle uh, numbers are, you can probably get those from a spec sheet from the manufacturer. So first up, we have a Smith & Wesson M&P 1522, which just shoots 2-2 LR rounds. And we're going to be shooting CCI's Clean 22 Subsonic, uh, which ironically has the same FPS rating as their standard velocity 2-2 LR. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's 1070, which is kind of like it, it may leaves you scratching your head a little bit. I forgot all the mags for this, so we're going to shoot this one at a time. And when we're doing these, we're in this enclosure. This is a you know covered shooting range. So actually our levels here will probably be a little bit higher than if we were just out into the woods. So we are going to, again, we're going to just be shooting at a at nothing just into our valley, which is a private range. I get a lot of people saying that we're shooting into the woods randomly. It's not the case. Private range, large backstop, a giant hill. So here we go with uh, unsuppressed. And this is subsonic, which a lot of 22 ends up being anyhow. So what do we end up getting there? 88 decibels max uh, w before we started suppressing it. So now we have the Advanced Armory Corps Prodigy Suppressor on uh, the M&P 1522. We're using that same ammunition. Let's give it a try. Subsonic suppressed. At 77.3, if you guys saw that before I started talking. And so that is a significantly uh, less amount than, uh, than we have with uh, unsuppressed using the same ammunition. Let's take this down range and see what it does down there. So this may not be the perfect setup, but it's the setup that we have. We are 50 yards away from our shooting platform up there. We have this, uh, this decibel meter kind of, you know, set up here in the best way that we can and honestly i think that the hardest part is going to be me walking away after setting the max but we're going to uh do these all in uh the highest velocity loudest and then the subsonic uh suppressed as we go down the line for um the purposes of this 22 it, they will both be subsonic rounds Next up, we have 9mm out of the PSA Dagger. This has been a pretty fun gun, very inexpensive when we're shooting 115 grain uh, supersonic ammunition for this portion. I think I have five in here. And again, we're not trying to hit anything, just trying to get a sound pressure level uh, here and there. And so for this one, we have 115.9, uh, you know, it's pretty darn loud, but we'll put the suppressor on it and see what the difference is. 
Now with our hybrid 46 suppressor, I'm shooting 147 grain, nine millimeters. And unfortunately I left the, almost the entire baggie at home other than three that I had in a mag. So it's been a really bad preparation day, but we'll uh, get a difference here than have two for downrange. So 84.4 max, if you guys saw that before I started talking, a tremendous uh, decrease from 115. Let's check the difference downrange. Next, we have the 45 ACP. This one is unique because 45 ACP is naturally subsonic unless you specifically look and search out supersonic rounds. We're using 230 grain ammunition in this, just full metal jacket. And again, we're not trying to hit anything just so that we can get the noise of the gun and the bullet only. We have 116 decibels on there, uh, which if you guys probably already saw, I hope, because I probably talked over it. And we'll see what it does with the Hybrid 46 suppressor. So same ammunition, 45 ACP, Hybrid 46. Let's see what the difference is. So 88.9 decibels. Uh, that's, again, a very significant reduction. Uh, so let's see what it looks like downrange. So now we have 300 blackout. This is out of an eight and a half inch SBR. We're shooting 147 grain supersonics out of this. It's going to be horribly loud. And honestly, for supersonics, uh, you know, I'm not really a big fan of 300 blackout because the ballistics of them, really with 5.56 or 7.62 by 39, you're, but you're getting a better uh, cartridge anyhow. But uh, this thing does really well with subsonics to be able to run those reliably. So let's get our baseline with supersonics. Um, with the decibel meter, this thing's probably not even be able to read high enough to really uh, accurately give the sound. I mean, it's just a horribly loud gun. Uh, 115.9, I would say we're, we're well over 115.9, um, but that's what the thing reads. So now we have the Hybrid 46 suppressor on there. We are using Winchester 200 grain subsonics with the uh, 300 blackout. In my opinion, this is the best thing for it. And this compares very, uh, it's very comparable to 45 ACP, but this has better, um, this has better bullet uh, dynamics as far as its ability to cut through the air. Although the 45 ACP is going to punch a bigger hole, but let's see what we get as far as the decibels on this. And it's significantly quieter. I don't know if 110 really does it justice, but uh, it because we had a lot of casings flying around here. But even that is twice as quiet when you know three decibels is double the volume. We'll see what it shows downrange. So here we have our Hybrid 46 on a you know, M4 model AR-15. Um, we're just going to totally forego the supersonics. I think everyone and their brother knows that they are ridiculously loud. But we have loaded up uh, subsonics. These are 223s. They're 77 grains and they are subsonic, which means that if, for the way this gun is tuned, it's not going to cycle. And I've heard it uh, all about changing the gas system and I'm not going to change the whole gas system for a round that is just a novelty. So let's get a look at what uh, this ends up being. And this is actually one of the quietest rounds that I have ever fired in the past. And so I'm not gonna use ears or anything. And that may have actually been louder. We're gonna to have to go to the tape to see what the first one said. This says 89.5. I wanna say it's probably quieter than that. I wanna say they're probably just cycling the gun manually uh, because they don't eject because there's not enough pressure or one of these shells uh, flying around here. Probably got that number, but we'll take a look at the tape and see what it ends up being. So 76.6. Unfortunately, in my haste to get the shot off, I shot the last two 5.56s that we have that are subsonic without hitting the record button on the camera that was downrange. But the difference there, I didn't, I still haven't seen the first one off the GoPro. I am going to assume it's pretty darn uh, dramatic between the supersonics and the subsonics. So guys, I hope that that gives you all 
a quantitative view of the differences between the shooter of uh, you know supersonics versus subsonic suppressed and what it would like be like being downrange approximately 50 yards from where the uh, where it's being shot from obviously the, some of the things that we use today aren't of the top tier quality but we're again not running a science lab here we're doing the best that we can out here in the middle of the woods of Kentucky so you know if you want anything better than that I don't know go look at like Mythbusters or a science channel or something like that but guys if you like this be sure to hit the like button subscribe down below I appreciate you coming out here today and I'll see you in the next one